Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Lutheran Church here in uh, it's a beautiful day for us to celebrate. I'm glad you all were able to find a parking space. Um, <laughs> just one more little snafu on our journey to uh, completion. Um, they had some trouble with the lines and had to repaint them. So next week, maybe we'll have lines to park in. But uh, guys, looks like you all did a pretty good job out there. Uh, today we are, obviously, it is Independence Weekend uh, week, and we will be uh, celebrating our independence, not just independence um, that we are familiar with in the world, but also independence uh, from Satan, from sin and death, and uh, it is a great celebration for us to do that today. Uh, I did want to make a quick announcement. We are having our VBS this week. And uh, we'll do a little blessing of our VBS people at the end of the service. Um, but it'll be a big week. So I ask for all of your prayers, uh, not only for the 70 or so children that will be here, but also their families and also our volunteers, that the Word of God would be proclaimed in truth and light to these little ones as they celebrate the Savior. And next week we'll have, uh, uh, hopefully a few of them will be able to show up and share a little bit of what they learned. But uh, please keep our VBS in prayer this week. And uh, I would invite you now to rise as we begin our worship this morning and face the cross. We worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are here.
Since we are gathered here this morning to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the holy body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, in word and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I announce to you the forgiveness of all of your sin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, your almighty power is made known chiefly in the showing of mercy, freeing us from the tyranny of Satan and his weapons of sin and death, which can separate us from you. Grant us the faithfulness of your grace, freeing us from this tyranny, that we may be called to repentance and made partakers of your heavenly treasures. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, and I invite the children to come forward for our children's message this morning. Thank you. 
Ezekiel out? He told Ezekiel, he warned him, he said, you know, they're probably not going to listen to you, but I want you to take my message to them anyway. I want you to go tell them my message. And when Jesus sent his disciples out into the wild world, they didn't take much gear with them at all. But they knew that they had God's power resting on them. And with, by God's power, they were able to do some amazing things for people. And St. Paul knew that it wasn't his own power that helped him go out into the wild world to preach. It was God's power resting on him. So do you think God's power tents over us? What do you think? On you guys? Do you think you have God's power tenting over you or resting on you? No? Yes? No? He needs you. <laughs> you do, King Emeryn. Because Jesus died on a cross to pay for our sins and rose from the grave, after that happened, he sent the Holy Spirit to come to us. And now, the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, God rests his power on us. It's like he's making a tent of his power over us. And because God tents over us, it protects us so we can go out into the wild world, maybe the wild world of vacation Bible school, and we can share the truth of God's word and the love of Jesus with everyone. And we couldn't do that without God's power resting on us or, what's it called? Tenting over us. Let's pray and you can go back to your seats. Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you for resting, for resting your, power your power over me. Over me. Help me, Help tell, me. Tell, others tell others about you. About you. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up, guys. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is the seventh Sunday after Pente Pentecost. The first reading is from Ezekiel, Old Testament, chapters 1 and 2. And there came a voice from above, an expanse over the heads. When they stood still, they let down their wings. And above the expanse over the heads, there was a likeness of a throne, an appearance like sapphire. And seated above the likeness of a throne, was a likeness with a human appearance, and, and upward from what had the appearance of his waist, I saw as it were a gleaming metal, like the appearance of fire enclosed all round. And downward from what had the appearance of his waist, I saw as it were the appearance of fire, and there was brightness around him, like the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud on the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness all around. Such was the appearance of the likeness of glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell on my face, and I heard the voice of one speaking. And he said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak with you. And as he spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. And he said to me, Son of man, I send you to the people of Israel, to nations of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. The decedents are also impu impudent and stubborn. I send you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. And whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. This is the word of the Lord.
The epistle for today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I must go on boasting, though there is nothing to be gained by it. I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up in the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And he heard things that could not be told, which man may not utter. On behalf of this man, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast, except for my weaknesses. Though if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. So to keep me from being too elated by the suppressing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, and it should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the epistle for the day. Thanks be to God. We rise now for our God. This morning comes from St. Mark, his sixth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went, down, went away from there and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? What is this wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done? by his hands. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joses, and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and among his relatives in his own household. And he could not do any mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And Jesus went about among the villages teaching. And then he called the twelve and began to send them out, two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. And he said to them, Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you, and they will not listen to you when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that the people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick, and healed them. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Christ. Lord Christ. Let us now confess our faith. Today we use the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. 
and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. It's fitting on this Sunday in early July to recall these words from the 19th century poet uh, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. He wrote, Listen, my children, and you will hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. This poem recounts a night in April of 1775, April 16th to be exact, that night when Paul Revere made his famous ride. He was called upon to alert the citizens of the little towns of Concord and Lexington, Massachusetts, that the British were coming. So Paul Revere and his partners, because there were actually three riders on that night, a guy named William Dawes and Samuel Prescott were also with him. They saw those two lanterns hanging in the old North Church in Boston. And so they made their way quietly across the Charles River, avoiding British warships that were moored there. And they got on their horses and began to ride. And as they rode, they warned the citizens and the patriots alike, the British are coming, the British are coming. And in sounding the alarm in the middle of the night, they awakened the citizens and the soldiers so that they could take action to defend themselves. And they were able to hide significant military stores to keep them from being captured by the British. And then they were ready for a battle that ensued in Concord and Lexington the next day. And they were able to defeat the British in that first battle of the American Revolution. 
400 patriots took on 700 British soldiers, defeating them and forcing them to retreat all the way back to Boston under a hail of gunfire the entire time. The Americans' success on that particular day was largely possible because three members of the Sons of Liberty, Paul Revere, William Dawes, and Samuel Prescott, heard the call to sound the alarm, to awaken the people to the danger that awaited. As we hear this familiar story, it is an image of how God calls to his people, calls them into battle against the enemy of his kingdom, Satan and his many soldiers of evil who are intent on overthrowing the kingdom of God and conquering his people, forcing them into bondage to slavery, to sin, to death. And while God could certainly take action on his own, he had the power to hurl down fireballs from heaven and lightning bolts from the skies. God is a patient and loving God. He is a God who desires, who prefers to work through his people, people like you and me people like the apostles, people like the prophets of old. God prefers to use his people to sound the alarm, to awaken people to the danger that awaits. And one of God's many prophets to sound the alarm for all to hear was a temple priest by the name of Ezekiel. By the time God had called Ezekiel into action, Judah was already captured and taken away to exile in Babylon. Ezekiel was among the tens of thousands of Hebrews that were forced out of the promised land across the deserts of what is now Iraq into Babylon and their captivity there. Judah's continued disregard for God and his word and his promises through worshiping other gods, through disobeying God's will, through, uh, <coughs> excuse me, through his not listening to his prophets caused them to be, walk, to walk away from God to walk away from his protection. And as they walked away from God, they walked into the awaiting arms of the mighty Babylonian army, who captured them, put them in chains, and dragged them across the desert into exile. Yet God, despite his people's centuries of disobedience, stayed true to his promises to redeem not just Israel, but his entire creation through his people, Israel. And so, from among these rebels in exile, God came to one of the few who had remained faithful to him, Ezekiel. He came to Ezekiel to warn his wayward children of the impending eternal doom, to sound the alarm, to wake up. God appeared to Ezekiel in this incredible vision that we get a glimpse of in our reading today. And he said to him, Son of man, I send you to the people of Israel, to the nations of rebels who have railed against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. And I send you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord. God calls Ezekiel a son of man, a fallen sinner, a weak human being, 
having noth done nothing to warrant such a call. But God calls him to serve him, to sound the alarm, to awaken his people to the danger that awaits. But Ezekiel feared God. He didn't think he had the, the, the tools, the equipment, the abilities. And so he laid down on the ground, face down. You see, Ezekiel really isn't much different than any of us, is he? But God himself would have none of Ezekiel's fear. Ezekiel was his man. And so God equipped him for the task at hand. He equipped him to sound the alarm. He gave him the Holy Spirit who entered into him, and the Spirit lifted him to his feet. And then God gave Ezekiel the authority of his word to alarm his rebellious people. But God also warned Ezekiel, saying words to the effect of, it will not be easy for you. These people may not listen to you, but that's not your problem. It's their problem. You simply speak my word, and they will know that a prophet has been among them. And it wasn't easy. But Ezekiel, guided by the Spirit, remained faithful to God in his call to sound the alarm. And he continually did just that throughout the entire book, even though most, as God indicated, continued to rebel against him and his word. But God is a patient and a loving God. Ezekiel tells us, or God tells us through Ezekiel, that as I live, declares the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. So turn back, turn back from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? And today, God continues calling to his people, calling to his people to sound the alarm so that others can wake up. He wants the world to hear. He wants the world to turn from their ungodly ways and to live. And as I look around here today in this place that we are gathered, I am betting that there are some among us today who are among those who have had an Ezekiel of sorts in their own lives. Someone who has sounded the alarm in your life. Someone who has awakened you and caused you to turn from your ways. Who caused you to wake up. For me, my Ezekiel, was a neighbor named Scott, a good friend named Dale, and many co-workers throughout my life. These were my Ezekiels. So think about today. Who were your Ezekiels? Who was it that sounded the alarm that caused you to wake up and to turn back to God. You and I, by the grace of God, have been awakened by an Ezekiel somewhere at some place in our lives. And now God has called us into his service. He has called on us to sound the alarm of truth found in his word to a rebellious people. But still today, as it was in Ezekiel's day, these rebels may not hear. They may not want to hear. 
They may not want to awaken. But like Ezekiel, we might then choose to just lay face down, fearing God and hoping that maybe he'll just go away and leave us alone. We may think God is going to call, needs to call, someone more holy than me, more capable than me, someone, you know, like a, a prophet or an apostle. But those prophets and apostles, Ezekiel, he was a priest who was taken away in exile. Matthew, he was a tax collector. Peter, James, and John, they were just fishermen. They were simply sons and daughters of man, weak human beings and sinners like you and me. And so as you might be lying there face down waiting for God to go away, I'm here to tell you, <laughs> he's not. He is calling you. He is calling you and he has already equipped you with everything you need to sound the alarm on his behalf. Here again, God's word. As Ezekiel lay face down, the spirit entered into him and lifted him up onto his feet. And then God gave him his word, saying, You shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, the apostles in our gospel today, they're watching as Jesus' hometown, the people that knew him best, rejected him, saying they were taking offense at him. They saw earlier that his own family thought that he was out of his mind. Yet Jesus continued sounding the alarm. And to help raise the alarm even louder, to turn up the volume, so to speak, he sent his disciples out two by two into the world to proclaim his mission, his mission that the world should repent and believe in the gospel, for the kingdom of God is at hand. God gave Ezekiel and Jesus' disciples everything they needed. And it's important to note that God didn't tell them that their measure of success was how many people actually listened, how many people actually turned and repented. The measure of success for Jesus' disciples is faith, their faithfulness to his word their faithfulness to his command to go sound the alarm in truth that people will know that the word of God was said to them. God has called you. He has called you to sound his alarm. Like he did with Ezekiel, the prophets the apostles, and with that Ezekiel in your own life, he has equipped you with everything you need to do what he has called you to do. It is by Jesus' death and his resurrection that you have been cleansed of all of your sins, and you have been made worthy to stand in the presence of God. And in your baptism, the Holy Spirit has entered you just as he entered Ezekiel. He has set you on your feet, and he has made you worthy through the gift of faith in God and his word and his promises. So do not fear, my brothers and sisters. Do not fear. God has sent you to live in accord with his words 
showing his love to others as he commands us to do while also speaking his word found in his scriptures. And if you do that, and if people actually listen to you and change, that is great. But if they don't, move on. Trust God's promise that they will know that the word of God has been spoken to them. And remember these words from St. Paul. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. So as you sound the alarm in other people's lives, perhaps you are planting a seed of faith. Maybe you're watering a seed that's already been planted. But remember this, it is the Holy Spirit whose power causes that seed to grow. It is the Holy Spirit who makes the seeds of faith grow. And as those seeds grow, God's kingdom will grow. And as God's kingdom grows, God brings more warriors into the field to defeat the powers of the world and to battle Satan as he reclaims his creation for himself. And one day, when Christ returns, as he promises he will, he will return to bring us into his presence. And then, on that day, we will live in peace. We will live in his presence. And we will live in his protection, in his eternal kingdom. But until that day, my brothers and sisters, hear God's call to you. Sound the alarm wherever you go, in your words and in your deeds. And may the peace of Christ, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds as you sound the alarm. Amen. As God's children, he calls all of us to come to him with our prayers. And uh, as we get ready to do that, are there any petitions that we would like to add to uh, what we already have? Any prayer requests that we need to be aware of this morning? Hello? Wayne. Uh, the family of Noah Lee, a local high school kid that was killed on Route 4. This, uh, the Lee family? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Wayne. <laughs> Kathy. A little Emily who we've been praying for is in a post-chemo battle for her life. Okay. Yeah, a little eight-year-old girl, I think, with uh, very bit severe leukemia. Yeah. So. Pastor Glenn Cran's daughter. Yeah. Daughter. Okay. Granddaughter. Granddaughter. Yes. Okay. Emily. Thank you. Kenny. Dana Benham. Dana Benham. Dana Benham. Yeah, she's uh, starting her chemo treatments for cancer. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, Leah uh, Wood Maloney had a major surgery this week, and uh, she is recovering from that, so we pray for her recovery, too. Let us rise now as we come to our Father in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, the magnificence the glory of your salvation. Set our eyes on you enthroned in heaven and the promised land of everlasting life, instead of the contempt we see for your word and the rebellious people around us. Give us utterance through your Holy Spirit, that we will preach the gospel in good faith. And if they have no ears to hear, let us shake the dust off our feet and move on to fertile ground. Bless Pastor Jim and all ministers after your own heart, that they would shepherd your flock into the time of your return, or they are called home to glory. Author of power, we pray for peace in this nation and the world. 
lifting up the people of Ukraine, Gaza, Israel, and Haiti, that they would be protected from the evils of war and lawlessness. Bless President Joseph and the leaders of this country, that they would do what is right for the populace, so we can be a bright city on a hill, a beacon of hope. A great position we lift up all people according to their needs, and especially Tom and Hospice, Continue to offer thanksgiving for Simber, Bibi, and Leah's successful surgeries, and ask for their quick recovery along with John and David. But thank you, Lord, that Paul is back home with his family and stable. Hear our prayers for Danielle, Brenda, and Chick, asking that you would restore them. We offer thanksgiving that Bill has finished his planned treatments, and along with Leah, Leslie, Ron, Matt, Emily, and Dana, and all with cancer, that in treatment and recovery, they will be comforted and healed. We lift up all caretakers, especially Beth and Meg, that they would be enlivened by your spirit. We pray also for Noah Lee's family, who passed away this last week. Mighty God, we pray for first responders in the military, that you would watch their coming and going, protecting them from harm. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As God's children, we are given many gifts to worship him with our time, our talent, and our treasure. And as we bring these gifts to the altar this morning, and as we prepare to receive these gifts from the altar, let us now pass along a sign of Christ's peace to one another. to uh, worship God with our offerings, let us take a moment now to uh, just thank God in our hearts for the many blessings that he has given us as we prepare to worship him. Lord God, Heavenly King, you have called your prophets and apostles of old. You have also called your people across all ages to serve you and your kingdom by sending them into the world to use the gifts you have given to all. Today you call on us, saying, I am sending you to them to serve your creation. Knowing that where our treasure is, there will be our hearts also. Help us to treasure you and your word more than anything, as we worship you with our time, our talent, and our treasure. 
We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. receive the Lord's Supper this morning, we examine ourselves in accordance with God's Word. The Lord's Supper is God's gift for Christians, and God des desires that His people receive this gift in faith, believing that it is given and shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. He does not want this gift misused through unbelief in His promises, unbelief which results in judgment. This means that as we come together at the Lord's table, as one body we affirm and confess. I recognize and confess I am a sinner. I repent of my sin and ask God's forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ is my only Lord and Savior, who saves me from sin, Satan, and death. Through faith I receive in my Lord's Supper, my risen Savior, Jesus Christ, true body and blood, under the form of bread and wine given and shed for the forgiveness of my sin, the strengthening of my faith, and life everlasting. If this is your confession, I invite you to receive these gifts in faith. If this is not your confession, I invite you to come forward as you are able to receive God's blessing. May the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give him thanks and praise. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it. 
And then he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this as often as you eat in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for a moment as we prepare for distribution. And I invite those who are in the nursery area, if they're welcome to come forward and uh, back into the sanctuary to receive Holy Communion.
Please rise for prayer. We give thanks to you, Almighty God. You have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that in your mercy, you would strengthen us to the same and faithful of you and the turn of love for one another. And through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, we'd like to install our Vacation Bible School volunteers. Um, please stand in your, in, in your places. Uh, rather than have everybody get up here, I'll just do it from here. Uh, we have uh, over 65 children that are going to be with us uh, this week. And we have uh, around 30 or so volunteers um, that are going to be with us. Yes, all of you that are volunteers need to stand. <laughs> There's no special dispensation here. No blessing if you don't stand. No, just kidding. Let us, uh, let us bless our volunteers. Dear friends in Christ, we thank you for volunteering to celebrate our Savior in our Vacation Bible School this summer with our children and the children of the community. As members of God's church, you'll have many opportunities to share Jesus' love this in the words and actions as you represent our Lord Jesus Christ and our church. So I ask now, will you help the children and their families to grow in faith in Jesus, their Savior? If so, then answer yes with the help of God. Yes. God's word says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The Holy Spirit works powerfully through God's Word to give us faith, to believe in Jesus, to grow in that faith, and to live a life of faith as His people. Will you share God's Word with children and their families through the Bible lessons and activities? Again, yes, with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. To the members of this congregation, I ask you, the Church of Christ, will you support encourage and pray for our Celebrate the Savior VBS program during this week. Will you pray for its workers? Will you pray for its teaching and its outreach ministry? If so, then answer yes with the help of God. Yes. And now may the power of the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit who empowered Ezekiel, the same Holy Spirit who empowered the disciples and apostles, the same Holy Spirit that empowered your personal Ezekiel. May he empower all of us to go into the world to teach these children. May we now, now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Please rise now for our closing blessing. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. May the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.
As we go out into the world, let us joyfully proclaim God's word and enthusiastically share Christ's love. Amen.